Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this 10 minutes or less devotion. I hope you are doing well. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at Zechariah chapter 9, verse 10. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reading from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 10. He will proclaim peace to the nations. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. It was a very short sentence, only one word in the Greek language. The person uttering that sentence was in the throes of death, but he rallied his strength to cry out so that someone could have heard it from perhaps a distance of a few hundred feet or so. The speaker, it was none other than Jesus. The one word sentence he spoke to telestai, translated into English as, it is finished. On this Good Friday, the Christian church throughout the world stands in awe at what happened on Calvary some 2,000 years ago. What happened was the unimaginable, the death of him who is life itself, God's one and only Son. What happened was the completion of a plan that God had formulated in eternity and set in motion in the Garden of Eden. Eden, after all, was the site of rebellion against God. By rejecting the will of God and aligning themselves with Satan, Adam and Eve destroyed the peaceful relationship they had enjoyed with their Creator and with each other. Even more tragic, their disobedience affected the entire human race. Just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men, because all sinned, says Romans 5.12. A world of sinners was now pitted against the holy God. Most are unaware, and all are unwilling and unable to reverse the situation, but God is not. That's where Jesus comes into the picture. The eternal Son of God, Jesus Christ, took on human flesh as the Prince of Peace to reestablish peaceful relations with God and the world, and he did it by living and dying as the world's substitute. So when Jesus cried out on the cross to tell us, Ty, or it is finished, he was announcing that he had done everything necessary to bring the world back into a peaceful relationship with its creator. With that triumphant exclamation, Jesus was proclaiming peace to the nations of the world. And he was declaring to you that you are at peace with God. His declaration is a fact. Jesus is not asking you to meet him at a peace conference where the two of you can negotiate. He's not inviting you to finish the work he started. No, all he's saying is simply believe it. To tell us, Ty, it is finished. Salvation has been won. Peace has been secured. When Jesus proclaimed that peace on the cross, there were representatives from many nations in Jerusalem who might have been in a position to hear that announcement. After all, there were many Passover pilgrims in the city that day. Today, we Christians voice that proclamation of peace to the nations of the world. Through personal witness and support of world missions, we echo Christ's words and proclaim peace to the nations. In the name of Jesus, amen. Would you pray? Lord Jesus, your death has given us life and peace. Today, we kneel before you in gratitude. Amen. Join with me now in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a truly blessed day, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until that time, the Lord be with you.